everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for continuing to tune in. If you're new, welcome. I am so happy that you're here. Today, I am going to do my November plant haul. I actually filmed it two days ago, thinking that I would not find another plant with the last two days of November, but yeah, you know how that goes. It was, it's a pretty good plant. So I did end up buying one, but since I already filmed it and I have to film it again, I decided that I'm going to do it with wine. I'm gonna be sipping in a little Pinot. Is it Pinot? Oh no, it's a Cabernet Sauvignon. So I'm gonna be sipping on some wine while I'm going through my plant haul. I'm more of a Malbec fan, but it's just gonna have to do. Okay, if you remember in my last video or maybe the video before I said that I was not going to buy any more plants online. We all know how that goes and we knew it was a lie when I said that. I am going to go through the plants that I got online and then I'm going to go through the plants that I got locally. Let's get started. First, here are my Sansevier Cleopatra. I absolutely love these guys. Sansevier is one of my favorite plants. They are so easy. They're super fun. I'm kind of really getting into these dwarf varieties because I just love how short they are, how they open up, and you can see how pretty they are once they do open up. This one fell down a few times. That's why it's all curled up. It will open up to look like this one. If you guys get these shipped, they end up usually coming to you looking like this, but once the roots establish, they open up and look amazing and pretty. And these are just a great little stands. With this shipment, I ended up getting a freebie. So this doesn't count, but you know, it's a plant haul video, so I have to include plants that I got for new. This is a Hiawatha. I just call them Hiawatha. They're Hiawathas. I am not a succulent person and I can't pronounce anything like that, but whatever. I like this one because it looks like an iceberg or ice. I don't think I mentioned it before, but I've been to the Arctic twice and the Antarctic once, and I'm going back to the Antarctic in about a year, and I am obsessed with ice. I know it's weird being a tropical plant person and being obsessed with ice, but I love this little guy. He's cute, and he's fun, and he looks like little icebergs. Also this month, I was a little bit nervous shipping this Alocasia sinuta because they end up going dormant really easily. Like, if you sneeze on them, then forget it. Like, they're gone. I got this one from someone that I've ordered from before, and I love I love alocasias. I have quite a few different varieties. I'm looking for more, always. These guys all live near my humidifier. I really want to get an alocasia dragon scale, the green one and the silver one, but they are really hard to find. So I got this Anuka because it sort of reminds me of both of those because it's green and it's kind of silvery and really cool. The leaves on these are really firm, which is kind of cool. Really, really love this guy. I also got this Hoya Kadada. I'm going to link the video where I unbox this plant above or below, maybe both. I'm not quite sure how that works yet. You can see it's a super cool Hoya. I couldn't resist saying no to it. It was from Jan off of Facebook. As you can see, this one has really cool red leaves and that's completely normal. It did lose a few leaves after it got to me, which I fully expect because this plant has gone from Florida to Buffalo and it probably was thinking this is the worst thing ever. So if a plant loses leaves, especially as soon as you get it, don't worry about it. It's just adjusting to your environment. I have this one in an African violet pot because I find that they do really well in here. What I love about these pots is that, let's see if I can lift it out. There's water in there and it soaks through the terracotta and it just stays moist. It does not stay wet and it's just the amount of perfect moisture that these plants like and you just refill the water probably like every two weeks. Also, I know a lot of people are told never to water Hoyas because they like dry out between waterings and that's true, but there's some that do not. Also, I was one of the few lucky people that scored a Burl Marks Fantasy Philodendron off of Steve Lee. I'm so excited for this one. I'm also really terrified of killing it. There's not a lot of information out there on these guys, but they're really gorgeous. They have really fine, delicate, stunning leaves. I am gonna make a moss pole for this one eventually, but he's still pretty small. I am keeping it in my pink house, which is higher humidity and higher heat. So I was told these are terrarium plants. I don't have a terrarium, but I have a greenhouse, which I called a pink house because there's pink lights in it. I really hope it does well, because it's a really, really cool, gorgeous, stunning philodendron. Also this month, I was able to score this six inch pot of variegated string of hearts. So I was really, really excited to find one that is so big and so gorgeous. I love it, full, it's gorgeous. It has some really long vines. I think it's gonna do really well. I have it really near the grow light, so it gets a ton of light, and it's also near where my other one is, so I'm hoping the 
other one's gonna talk to it and be like, hey, you're in a really great place. And this one's gonna say, oh my gosh, yeah, I am. I'm gonna grow like crazy. The other one that I got online, unfortunately I can't show you because the seller that I got it from forgot to include a heat pack and the thing died immediately, pretty much. It came from, I think, Oregon, if I remember correctly. And it was during a time when we had teens and 20s already in November, didn't survive. So I'm just showing you guys a photo of it. I'm really, really sad because I really want a white knight so bad and a white wizard and this one was gorgeous and then I have kept the stump hoping that maybe it will come back and it will be happy but it might be just wistful thinking at this point. So those are the plants that I got offline and now I'm going to show you plants that I purchased locally. Earlier this month I went to one of my favorite greenhouses and I'm purposely not telling you where it is because I want to hoard all the plants that they sell but there I got a few really really nice ones and I'm super excited to show you guys. One of them is this Raphoderma tetrasperma. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love the structure of it. I already had one from the same greenhouse. I couldn't resist this one. It was only 35 Buck. You can see the leaves on it are absolutely stunning. There's ones that, let's see if I can actually point it out. There's ones that have holes in it. I really, really love these guys. They're such easy growers. Still kind of trying to find its home, but you know what? No matter where I put it, it's happy. It's putting out a ton of leaves. It's happy, so I'm happy and I love it. That greenhouse, the mystery greenhouse. I also got this Peperomia maculosa. There were a few of them there that had more leaves on it, but I am really obsessed with structure and simplicity and foliage. And that is something that you'll always hear me say on my channel is how much I love the structure of a plant. And this one, even though it's really simple and it's just two leaves, I really couldn't pass it up. And these leaves are huge. They get bigger and they're really, really thick. And you can see it up close, how pretty and structural it is. And it also has some new leaves coming in. So I'm excited to see how it forms. At that greenhouse, I also got Palia Glocka. I love these guys. They are the easiest plants that you can grow. If you have someone who doesn't know anything about plants but still wants something cute, get them a Palia Glocka. I have plans for this one. I'm going to be putting it in something. I'm gonna make something a planter that normally is not a planter. And I'm gonna do it right here on YouTube. So you are going to want to subscribe. Just a quick close up. Really cute, really pretty. At Mystery Greenhouse, I also ended up finding this saguaro cactus. I do not know whether it's false or true. I did ask the growers and they said that these are true saguaro. This greenhouse has been around for over a hundred years. They said this one's about four years. I love that it's heart shaped. I love that it's just a weirdo like me and it's a double. It weighs a lot. I'm amazed how heavy these guys are. But this one lives in my bathroom in front of a south facing window and it also has a grow light so it receives a ton of light. I really am happy with it. I love it. And even if it was false, I'd be okay with it. I really don't care if it's false or not. I just want to know what I have in the sense of being botanically correct. Also at Mystery Greenhouse, I got the Sansevieria parva. Like you guys know by now, I am obsessed with Sansevieria. I like collecting as many as I can, and I particularly like the smaller varieties, but I like, you know what? I have big ones too, so that's a lie. I like them all. This is a Sansevieria parva. It's really cool. It's a trailing Sansevieria, so it's kind of like a, oh, it's my mic is all caught on it. Oops. Pretend you didn't see that. It's a trailing Sansevieria. So it has these roots that shoot out and these babies grow on the end of it. I could take these off and plant them, but I really kind of like the way it looks. It's almost like a spider plant, but honestly it's cooler than a spider plant because it's a Sansevieria. And this one has already bloomed twice for me. And as you can see, it has quite a few other blooms coming in. What was really cool about it is I came home one night and the whole house smelled absolutely amazing. And I walked around the house and I was trying to find what smelled amazing. And it up being this this nondescript I mean sorry no you're gorgeous it ended up being this you don't expect a Sansa Vieira to smell amazing but it does and if you can get yours to bloom I highly recommend it yeah they're low light plants but if you want them to bloom you want to put them somewhere where they get a lot more sun seven there's seven flowers coming in on this ah this is so awesome if you if you know someone who makes perfume tell them they make it make Sansa Vieira perfume last but not least from the mystery greenhouse I ended up getting a Deshidia ovata this is this is my first Ashidia. They're a lot like Hoyas, which is amazing that I have not gotten one yet. This is also known as the watermelon Ashidia. I ended up finding 
this plant at a Lowe's earlier this summer. And originally I thought this was a Dushiti out and I tried looking online and it's really hard to tell when you only have one plant, which one you have. But now that I have with both of them, I'm able to figure out this is a Peperoma quadrangularis and this is a Dushidia. I know some people call it Dushidia, but I like Dushidia better, so I'm calling it Dushidia. And you can see when they are up close how you can get them mixed up, but you also can see the differences. And one of the other ways you can tell the difference is that the Dushidia has a lot thicker leaves, especially on older leaves, and the Peperomia quadrangularis has softer leaves and they're not, they're a little bit more pliable, I guess you could say. Another way you can tell the difference is that the quadrangularis has sort of rectangular or angular stems and they're often red whereas the Dishidia are green and they have a rounder stem. They both turn different colors in the light. So I don't know if you can see, let's see if I can get it closer. Some of these are kind of turning purple. So when it gets more light, it turns colors. But this one does it too. And this one is not in a window, it's under grow lights, but you can see it's really, really happy. And it's not really that close. So if you want something that looks really cool that can take low light, highly recommend Peperomia quadrangularis, also known as a beetle Peperomia. Okay, so last but not least, I went on a trip to Rochester with my friend Bridget. I did a video of potting up those plants because, oh my God, cat, stop. I did a video of potting up the plants that I got from Rochester because one of them was obscenely pot bound. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. Take your idea of what pot bound is, multiply that by like 54 and that's what this Monstera was. I'm gonna feature that Monstera at the end of the video because honestly, you guys, I can't lift that thing. It is huge. One of the ones that I got in Rochester is this Monstera Edinsoni round form. I much rather prefer round form than narrow form. What do you guys like? Do you prefer the narrow form Edinsoni or the round form Edinsoni? Because I love I just, I just, I don't know. I really like the round form better. I have it training to go up this piece of driftwood. I think it gets cooler leaves in the long run, especially when you train it up. In Rochester, I also got a lot of lemon lime trailing philodendron. I feel like a lot of these common philodendrons are often looked over and I don't know why because they're really stunning. They're super easy to grow. Another thing I really loved about this pot is how it's mixed in with some Brazil and I think the other pot has just regular heartleaf philodendron but I think more people need to mix them up because look how cool that looks with all the different ones and it puts on a ton of growth. I got this little one. I got two little ones as a filler and then I got one giant one which I'm going to show a photo of because it's too big to move. Also in Rochester I jumped on the butt plant Friend. I saw these lithops, they were cheap. I guess they're cute. In Rochester, I also found this small pot of string of pearls. I did get a string of pearls in New York City and I'm going to link the video in which I found that string of pearls because I also went to the New York Botanical Gardens and the New York Botanical Gardens are amazing. And my brother ended up composing music to go with your little botanical gardens tour so you gotta check out that video. Anyway, I got this string of pearls because the last one I got, I somehow killed it. I think my error was not repotting it when I got it. It stayed in the plastic nursery pot and it was in Miracle Grow most likely and it was too moist for it and it just, just deflated. Like I said, not a succulent person. I have no idea what I'm doing with these guys. When I filmed this video the first time, I didn't think I would find anything, but one of my friends, Rachel, opened up a second location of her plant shop known as the Plant Shack in East Aurora, which is a kind of like a suburb of Buffalo and it's awesome, you guys should go. It is so cool how she designed it and she uses drawers and it's stunning. Rachel, you did a really, really great job. I went there for the grand opening and I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna find anything. No, no, it's only two, two more days to the month. There's gonna be nothing I want here. Wrong. This is a Begonia Amphioxus. I have been admiring these guys online because they look like a cross between something being prehistoric and Dr. Seuss. How can you say no to this adorable, gorgeous, awesome plant? One way you can say no is it needs really, really high humidity. So this one also lives in the pink house. Maybe at some point I'll get an actual terrarium. Begonia Amphioxus, super cute. I absolutely love it. And last but not least, here is the amazing, gorgeous Grendel. I named it Grendel after the monster in Beowulf because this guy is a monster and he needed a legendary monster name because the fenestrations on it is amazing. It has this new leaf coming in and it's actually open almost all the way now since I took this video and it looks amazing. I love this plant. It's the first thing I see when I wake up every morning. And then what's this? 
Oh my gosh! Ah, it's another monster! Help! Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I really, really, really do. I am super, super introverted. Well, maybe not super introverted. I'm pretty introverted, but being able to talk to you guys online and talk to you guys about plants really, really makes me happy. And I'm really excited to share something that I love with you and with other people. Thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Weasley appreciates it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.